Well, I'm in my last months of my term as City Parish President, Mayor of Lafayette, Louisiana. As I tell people all the time, I am term limited legally, and I'm term limited maritally. Um, so I find myself reflecting quite a bit in recent uh, weeks and months. In fact, I think when history looks at our 12 years in office, there'll be some low points, but I think there's gonna be an awful lot of high points. As many of you know, our utilities department is delivering the fastest internet speed in the whole world to our citizens. Harvard University says we are the happiest city in all of America. Pretty neat stuff. But I also know that our term is gonna be bookended by two very uh, unique tragedies. Hurricanes Katrina and Rita early on, and of course, um, the shootings at the Grand Theater towards the end of our term. There, those sort of things cause you to reflect and look at the good and the bad naturally. It makes you want to see where did you come from, where are we heading, uh, what have we achieved, what have we not achieved, what have we learned, and what have we yet to learn. What I want to talk about today is what my community has taught me, and I want to talk about what the tragedies have taught me. What, one of the neat lessons, I guess, I've learned about the tragedies is that they're paradoxical in nature. You know, they, they, they reveal the extremes of preparation. We're always prepared. We're never quite really prepared. And what I use as an example is that it's like losing an elderly parent. You know it's going to happen. You know it has to happen. And you prepare yourself for it. But in the end, when it does happen, you find out you weren't really as prepared as you thought. You also know that you assume that tragedies can tear apart a community. But what my community has taught me is that tragedies can bring people together. In South Louisiana, we are always prepared. We prepare a lot for hurricanes. We watch the storms, we listen to the experts, and when the experts say the hurricane is heading our direction, our preparation kicks in. We, we, we stock up in supplies, we, we take out the generators, um, you know, we, we get things, we board up our windows. And then when all of our preparations are finished, what do we do? We throw a hurricane party. Now, <laughs> And I wonder sometimes, are we so confident in our preparations, or is it because they've cried wolf so many times that a big one is headed our way that we don't take their advice and also, besides just boarding up and stocking up, we don't pack up and get out. We don't evacuate. But the truth is, I don't think anybody could have prepared our state for the kind of devastation that Hurricanes Katrina and Rita inflicted upon it. Ironically, Lafayette was at the center of neither storm and yet we were, at the, we were at the geographical center of both. And so in a short period of time, we had tens of thousands of people converging on our community. As a young administration, I watched in awe at the generosity and goodwill that poured out from our community. All I could do was try to steer, it, steer something a little bit that really, quite frankly, the love and the compassion was gonna happen with or without a mayor, right? What the, what the response taught me was that when our fellow man was in a in time of need, the best instincts of our Cajun and Creole ancestors kicked in. We cooked, we gave, we prayed, we played music to mourn, we played music to give us hope. We held hands, we created art, we opened up our homes. We celebrated life and we celebrated our faith in the future. Now, I will tell you, as the mayor, I know I did not create that goodwill. I did not create that generosity. I know that I did not build that, that wonderful culture that we have. I was simply a reflection of our community. I was supposed to be the voice of our community. Something that we learned, I know something that I learned after the hurricanes, was that the first defense in a case like that, in a, in a storm like that, is definitely not the government, it's you. You have to be prepared to take care of yourself, take care of your loved ones, and if possible, take care of your neighbors. After uh, a few years, we had another hurricane heading our direction, and knowing what I knew from the, the first hurricanes that I experienced, I called our local Coca-Cola bottler, and I said, Is there, would it be asking too much for y'all to bring in an extra truckload or two of water? And of course, they accommodated us. We pre-positioned as much ice as we could, so we wouldn't have to wait for the state. So it worked out pretty good. But on the other hand, we're never prepared. 
10 years, almost, almost exactly 10 years later after Katrina, a deranged stranger came into our fun-loving, faithful, family-oriented community that knows no stranger, and in an act of violence, completely shook it to the core. We're now 12 years in office almost. By any measure, we're veterans of preparation, right? But how could anybody prepare for such a devious, evil act of violence? And on top of everything, I was out of the state. I wasn't even in the region. So I had to watch from afar as my community's best instincts kicked in. What did we do? How did we do? How did we respond? We responded the same way our ancestors taught us to respond after the storms. We cooked, we gave, we prayed. We played music to mourn, and we played music to help us heal. We, um, <laughs> we played music to help us heal. We, uh, we, we created art, we held hands, we opened up our homes, and we celebrated life. We celebrated our, our faith in the future. And once again, I know that as mayor, I did not create that generosity. I know that we, did not, we, didn't, we didn't build that culture. But I also knew we had to heal. And, and as we talked about healing as a community, one of the things I became very sensitive to was that not everybody was gonna be on the same healing path. We had a few people in our community that were gonna heal completely different than the rest of us. In the weeks following, I've thought a lot about the leadership lessons, the life lessons of two completely different responses that were actually very, very similar. It's a funny thing, I said that we were always prepared for a hurricane, and we are. But when the hurricanes hit, it revealed some weaknesses. I said that we could never be prepared for the shooting, but that's not true either. We prepare every day for unexpected tragedies. Our police department responded instinctively because of all their preparations. In fact, all of our first responders responded admirably. My message to, to mayors and to civic leaders all over the country is that a tragedy like this shooting will likely never happen in your community, but it could. So when you're doing your budget, when you start making your preparations for your annual time and, and money, don't skimp on training. Treat training the way you treat insurance. You gotta pay for it and you hope you never use it. But it's the emotional and psychological training that's really difficult. And that's where I relied on the response of our community to lead the way. My community was determined that we would not be identified and, and, and identified by the tragedy itself. My community said we're going to be identified by the response to that tragedy. We all saw in the moments following, hurricane, by following the shooting, hashtags Lafayette Strong, hashtags Pray for Lafayette. They became the anthems for our community. People all over Facebook expressed their love for Acadiana. What I saw shortly after that in the next few days, it became clear that this senseless tragedy was not going to take the joy from our community, that this kind of hatred and anger was not going to, make, was not going to prevail in the happiest city in America. In fact, one resident said, sadness picked the wrong city to visit. There's way too much love for it to, to, for it to survive. So inevitably, it was our community that said we would be happy again. I knew we were resilient and I knew we would persevere, but the whole time we talked, and I talked to the national media about what we had to do and how this community was gonna be happy and we would heal, I always try to be sensitive to the fact that there were some among us that were not gonna heal so fast. I'll never forget on the Sunday night after the shooting, I came out of the cathedral after a prayer service for the victims and waiting outside was a group from the national media that wanted to do an interview. So as they started setting up, I saw a lady who I hadn't seen before. And I asked her, I said, did you just come to Lafayette today? I haven't seen you. I said, are you, are you new to Lafayette? She said, no, actually, she said, I've been here the whole time. But she said, I have a unique job. My job is to get into the heart of a community. So she said, I go to coffee shops, I go to restaurants, I talk to people on the street. And then she paused and she said, Mr. Durrell, she said, what is it about this place? She said, it's different than anything we've ever been, any place we've ever been. She said, in fact, it's different than any place we've ever been in Louisiana. I said, well, you tell me, what, what, have, what have you seen? She said, people are smiling everywhere. They're warmly greeting each other and their, their discussion is all about what can we do to help? 
She said, what I don't see is I don't see anybody, I don't see any anger, I don't see any bitterness. And I said, well, you know, I said, obviously I can't really give you a complete answer and I'm not gonna try to fool you into thinking I can, but I'll give you a theory of why I think we're different. I said, you know you're in a unique state, right? You're in Louisiana. I said, what you probably don't realize is this is a unique area of that unique state. And what makes us different is the first three or four cultures that settled this part of the state were all forced here from somewhere else. And they had to assimilate to survive, but they did more. They thrived. I said, we refer to America as a, as a, as a, as a melting pot. I said, down here, we don't. We refer to South Louisiana as a gumbo. And I said, and there's a difference, but there's a difference. I said, in a melting pot, everything goes into the pot, right? And, and melts, and it becomes a brand new single product. I said, that's not true of a gumbo. In a gumbo, all the ingredients contribute to the overall flavor of the gumbo, but those ingredients retain their individual characteristics. And I said, that's who we are. We're a diverse, we're diverse cultures that all contribute to the overall flavor of our community while proudly retaining the distinct differences of our cultures and we share them with each other. So I said, that's, that's one piece why I think we're a little bit different. 12 years ago, I asked to be mayor. I asked to lead this community. What I've learned in those 12 years is that I relied on the best of our community to lead me. What I've learned over the years is that it's the best in our community and our best of our culture that will ensure that we heal. It's the best of our community, it's the best of our people, it's the best of our culture that will ensure our future. What you learn as a leader is that you cannot do it all yourself. In fact, after 12 years, you learn all that you cannot do. You can simply sit back in awe as your community does it. What you learn after 12 years is you're simply supposed to be a reflection of your community.